Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'm very excited to be having a look at Subnautica on iPhone and iPad. In this video, we are just gonna be having a look at the graphics of the game and the performance. Okay, let's get into it. Before we get into the game's performance, I thought it was worthwhile taking a look at the graphics of the game on mobile. On iPhone and iPad, you can adjust some graphical options. First is landscape detail, which goes from low, balanced, and high. The difference between these modes is pretty small, and none of them seem to have a notable impact on performance either between using them. It looks like Play Digis are universally running the game at low graphics on mobile for the game, even if you opt for high landscape detail. When comparing the mobile port to PC, in most scenes, the difference really isn't that staggering, for me at least. Texture quality on mobile is lower. Advanced features like ambient occlusion, bloom, or depth of field are lower or non-existent, and anti-aliasing quality is low. Most noticeably, shadow quality is much worse here. The best place to see this is obviously out here on the floating island. It's a night and day difference. Plus, the main character doesn't cast any shadows. For me, the reduced shadow quality is less noticeable when exploring underwater, which is good as this is most of the gameplay. You can change the resolution from very low up to absurdly high. Unfortunately, Play Digis were not able to tell me what the scaling percentages for the in-game resolution options are. On my M4 iPad Pro, for example, the game is running at 2.0x scaling, but with a final output resolution of the device's native display res. But the output resolution in the HUD does not change for the in-game resolution you choose. It's the same story on my iPhone 16 Pro Max, which is using 3.0x scaling, and it too always shows the same final output resolution of the device's native display resolution. I do hope in the future, Apple can incorporate scaling into the Metal HUD outside of developers using Metal Effects. Last, you can change the FPS from 30 to 60 and 120 on devices with a 120 hertz display. That being said, I found 120 hertz only works on iPad Pros. It seems that the 120 FPS toggle does not currently work on any iPhone Pro. Okay. Now let's take a look at the game's performance across some of my iPhone and iPads. Please note, I am running the game under the iOS 26 and iPadOS 26 Beta 3, so it can utilize the new Metal Performance HUD features. First is my iPhone 16 Pro Max, which has the A18 Pro chip. I played the game on here for about an hour and 20 or so minutes, only up to when the um, Aurora exploded and I obtained the Sea Glide. I first tried the game at max graphics and 120 FPS. And as I said earlier, 120 FPS doesn't actually work. The game is still capped at 60. Anyway, based on my limited time with the game, I believe the A18 Pro chip could probably pull off 60 FPS here at max graphics. It's just that the phone gets so incredibly hot at high resolutions, which causes the frame rate to drop within just a few minutes. With the new Metal HUD, we can now see the thermal state. During my gameplay, it quickly goes from nominal to fair and then to serious. This indicates that major throttling is happening and the device is in critical state. This is a very common problem with mobile devices due to being passively cooled. I found to achieve 60 FPS, I had to lower the resolution to medium. Even in this state, the thermal indicator still showed serious. 
so I imagine for much longer play sessions, the FPS will likely still drop. In order to get the thermal state to return to nominal or fair, I found enabling a 30 FPS cap was ideal. While the frame interval does not show a consistent 33.33 milliseconds for 30 FPS, the experience is still just fine for this type of gameplay experience. And 30 FPS allows me to play at absurdly high resolution more easily. It's also great to see that the game doesn't really use over 2.5 gig of memory at peak here, and metal video memory usage doesn't hit much over 500 megabyte either. This is great to avoid crashes, as this app has only 6 gig of available memory to use on the iPhone 16 Pro Max. There is a bit of shader compilation going on here, which we can see in the new Metal HUD, but from my experience with this game, it is considerably lower than many other big mobile ports that have these issues. Next is my iPad Pro 11 inch with M4 and 16 gig of RAM. I first tried the game at max graphics and 120 FPS. On average, during my limited time with the game, this iPad can pull off 120 FPS on average in this state. But again, aiming for such a high FPS on a passively cooled system with a game of this caliber is not a good idea. Within 32 minutes, the device went from nominal thermal state to serious. This would cause the FPS to randomly drop in some scenes due to thermal throttling. For this type of game, I honestly think 120 FPS is completely unnecessary anyway, and it tanks battery life like you wouldn't believe it. To get the thermal state back to nominal or fair, I simply enabled a 60 FPS cap at max graphics. Strangely, the iPad could not always deliver a consistent 16.6 milliseconds. For example, sometimes it's 60, then 60.25, then 59.87, and so forth. This could be an issue due to the 120 hertz display. I tried enabling low power mode, which changes the refresh rate to 60 hertz, but this made the performance significantly worse, which is what I predicted. I never like recommending low power mode, as it reduces CPU and GPU performance to conserve battery. It's simply not for gaming. We have game mode for that. Anyway, I strongly believe the average gamer is simply not going to notice these frame pacing issues, or if you do, it's not really game breaking. Also, yes, there is a bit of shader compilation going on at times, but uh, similar to the uh, what I said in the iPhone 16 Pro Max, it's considerably lower than what we're seeing with other big mobile ports on iPad. I do believe, I strongly believe, PlayDigis could probably run this game at higher video settings. Subnautica on iPad Pro M4 seems to be using only about 80% of the GPU's frame budget and very little memory suggesting the game could handle higher graphics settings without slowing down. Hopefully they do add some higher graphical options for more powerful devices in the future. I think one of the most important ones is just like a toggle for improved shadow quality, like low, medium or high. Moving on, we have my iPad Air 13 inch with M3. Honestly, there's not much to say about this one. It can pull off 60 FPS really well. Although I did notice I had to change the resolution from absurdly high to very high for a locked 60 FPS. The game does compile shaders more often at absurdly high and some scenes are challenging to run at this resolution. So very high it is. Very high resolution on the other hand has no issues, delivering a consistent 16.67 milliseconds for the frame interval, and the HUD shows a nice flat line throughout gameplay. No frame pacing issues. Shader compilation still occurs at times, 
but it's actually not being reflected in the frame interval. Excellent. Another important thing to note is that after playing the game for one hour, it did not throttle or get hot. The thermal state was always nominal. That is really, really good. Obviously, M3 in this iPad is stupidly powerful for an iPad, so I know this this device isn't going to represent, you know, low-end iPads, but I think this is really good. And our last device to look at is my iPhone 12 Pro with the A14 chip. I wanted to see how the game fared on an older device. Pulling off 60 FPS is very difficult at higher resolutions. And the phone throttled so hard at one point that the phone lowered the refresh rate or the frame rate to 30 to quickly improve the thermal conditions. To stop the iPhone dropping to 30 FPS due to overheating and to more often get 60 FPS, I found it was best to play at low resolution and balanced landscape detail. Also, this game can only play up to balanced uh, detail. Yes, it's likely running at something like 200 to 300p. But, you know, seeing a flat line in the frame graph is really cool for me, especially for an A14 chip. Keep in mind, even at low resolution, the thermal state still went up to Sirius. I didn't play for long on this phone, so I can't guarantee that you're going to be getting 60 FPS, like, indefinitely. I, couldn't, I, I highly doubt that. If you have a weaker device, a good option is to enable a 30 FPS cap in the game. On this phone, 30 FPS allowed me to play at absurdly high resolution. The frame pacing is not perfect, but the phone doesn't get hot and battery life is much better. Also, the iPhone 12 Pro has only 6 gig of memory, but this isn't an issue, as the memory usage is, as I said, so low here, like 2.5 gig at peak. Really good. Alrighty, so that was Subnautica on iPhone and iPad. Um, overall, I've said kind of what I want to say, but uh, I think this port is completely fine from what I've seen. Um, it's cool that it can like get 60 FPS on pretty much any device. Uh, I think that's really cool. And um, obviously, the it, it, get, it makes your device really hot. So do keep that in mind. I think overall, it's probably best to play the game at 30 FPS if you're going to be playing for a really long time, which is what this, like this game, you play it for really a long time. <laughs> so I don't know, like, I don't know if 60 FPS is always going to work, but it's cool that it, based on my limited time with the game, it's working here this well. Um, so I'm really happy with what Play Digits have done, and it's really cool to see them continue to bring us premium mobile games. And personally, I think this is probably one of the biggest mobile releases to date. Um, I think it's really, really good. And I hope that uh, it encourages more developers to bring games like this to mobile uh, instead of, you know, all these weird free-to-play stupid stuff. This, this is what, this is, this is what I want on mobile, more stuff like this. 